We are in Edinburgh, the capital of Scotland, where its rich history is evident by its striking architecture and its unique charm by its dramatic landscape, remarkable food scene and welcoming people. With our brilliant travel itinerary and travel tips, this is how to best experience Edinburgh for first-timers. This is Lino and Lion. If you're flying, Edinburgh Airport is the nearest, about 8 miles west of the city center. After exiting from the baggage claim, you are facing the plaza with the Edinburgh sign to your right including the rental car and tram signs and the Airlink Express bus, the two cheapest transfer option. For a taxi, walk across the plaza towards the left. The taxi is the quickest transfer option to the city center. They are black cabs, ideal for large luggages. Like for the three of us, with so many luggages, the larger taxi resembling a minivan was what they provided us. Pay in cash if you have since there is a 5% surcharge for card payments. Before booking your accommodation, it is important to know the lay of the land of the city center. Princess Street Garden is a beautiful park that was created following the draining of the old Norlock or Lake. This garden appears to be in a valley bounded to its north by the elegant Gregorian New Town and to its south by the old town, the medieval heart of the city, which is hilly. If you only have one day in Edinburgh, most of your exploration will most likely be in the old town. So if your accommodation is in the new town, be prepared to walk up the hill to the old town. In spite of that, like in our case, we chose the new town because of its proximity to the rental car company since we drove to the incredibly beautiful Scottish Highlands and the Olive Sky the following day. Check out our vlog about these two places. Hotel check-in is in the afternoon yet, but if you arrive in the morning like us, you can leave your luggage at the hotel's storage room and have them call you whenever your room is ready. From our hotel, we walk along A1 Road that becomes Princess Street where the Scott Monument is located. Good morning guys, we're here in Edinburgh. It looks like a magical and enchanting city. So behind us, the Scott Monument is an elaborate neo-gothic structure that is built in honor of Sir Walter Scott, famous poet, novelist, and historian. You can actually get to the top for a uh, great view of the city for a small fee but you just have to climb the tight spiral case which is about 220 steps. From the Scott Monument we walk towards Waverly Bridge that connects the new town to the old town. With the Waverly Mall on the left side and next to it is the prominent building with the clock tower called the Balmoral Hotel. Behind us is the Balmoral Hotel, one of the grand hotels in its glory days. That is where J.K. Rowling secretly stayed for about six months at room 552 to complete his final Harry Potter series. The Waverly Bridge is a good vantage point to admire the views of the skyline of the old town. And while facing the old town, look right and you'll see the Scottish National Gallery from a distance under which trains will come out from the tunnel. These are two buildings that houses the best collection of Scottish paintings that sit upon a mound called the Mount. We walk from the bridge, we cross Market Street, staying on the right to enter Coburn Street. We continue walking up the hill until we saw Holy Cross Southern Cafe where we had our brunch. Check out our Scottish food vlog for a food review. Leaving Coburn Street behind and now we're entering the Royal Mile. This is the Royal Mile, the main street of the old town. The Royal Mile connects the Edinburgh Castle to the west and the Holy Rood House to the east. The Royal Mile is formed by four connected main streets, Castle Hill, Lawn Market, High Street, and Cannon Gate. So that's the Tyrant Kirk, formerly a church, now full of souvenir shops. So behind me is St. Giles Cathedral, the flagship of the Cathedral of Scotland. From St. Giles Cathedral, walk towards Lawn Market and turn left at the corner called George IV Bridge or National Cycle Route 75. The National Library of Scotland is on the left side of the street if you need to use the toilet. Cross the street to enter the picturesque Victoria Street. So this is the photogenic Victoria Street. Fans of the Harry Potter series believe that this is the inspiration of J.K. Rowling's Diagon Alley. However, this was debunked by J.K. Rowling herself. But in spite of that, people come over here to take pictures, videos. And this becomes the most photographed street in Edinburgh. Victoria Street also has the Oink Hog Roast, which is basically a pulled pork sandwich with the option of adding the crispy pork skin. The sandwich comes in three serving sizes, piglet, and grunter and they also have meal deals and specials from Victoria Street walk down the hill
Standing at the entrance to welcome visitors is Greyfriars Bobby, the famous dog. Legend has it that Bobby spent 14 years guarding the grave of his owner until his own death in 1872. The graveyard is also believed to be where J.K. Rowling took some of the names and people's graves as inspiration for some characters in the Harry Potter novel. To find the graves of interest to Harry Potter fans, walk to the back of the church and enter the back section called the Flodden Wall. In our case, we walked back to the hotel in time for check-in, after which we walked to Circus Lane, stopping over at one of the many Sutterberg locations to grab a bite. Circus Lane is located in an affluent suburb called Stockbridge, and this lane is one of the most popular and Instagrammable photography spots in Edinburgh. Where are we heading next? Dan Village. We really love this place. It's so relaxing just walking around along the river. Din Village used to be a milling center and is now a beautiful and tranquil residential community. Just be warned that there's lots of uphill and downhill here in Edinburgh and cobblestone streets. So a good comfortable footwear. From Dean Village, we walked to Calton Hill to watch the sunset. But of course, you can take a taxi for your convenience. We walk along Princess Street lined with fast foods, including a very familiar Filipino fast food called Jollibee. Calton Hill is home to several neoclassical structures, including the National Monument, Nelson Monument, the City Observatory, and the Dougal Stewart Monument. Calton Hill also offers panoramic views of Arthur's Seat, Leith, and across the Forth of Firth, the skyline of the old town, and the new town, and the best place to watch sunset in Edinburgh. Dinner was at Arcade Haggis and Whiskey House, along Coburn Street in the old town. Check out our top Scottish food vlog for our food review. If you have two days in Edinburgh, watch part two of our vlog that includes a tour of the the Edinburgh Castle, Royal Botanica, and many more, including essential travel tips. That's it for now. If you find value with this content, please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you for watching, and have a very blessed day.